This episode is dedicated to Ryan Northcott, a pillar of the cult community and a big supporter of the show. Rest in peace, dear friend. You will be forever missed. To honor what he did for the community, all the music in the series is from the albums he produced under the artist's name Mechano Receptor. We would also like to link to the GoFundMe that has been set up to support his widow and two daughters. You will find it in the show notes. We would now like to give you the scenario Downfall, from the upcoming Screams and Whispers scenario collection, written by M. Marshall. Content warning. The scenario heavily features sexual themes and references to sexual abuse. It gets rather dark, so listener discretion is advised. Thursday, June 11th, 1999. We're approaching the end of the century. The future is digital. Dot com. IT stocks are soaring and the Apple iBook is the thing everyone craves. Ever since the whole Lewinsky thing, the culture seems to be all about sex. And Britney Spears is the hottest little thing, all spread out over the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. It's a hot summer too and the fan blades are whirring overhead at the campus cafe at Columbia University in New York, where you are currently. Security of the campus has been strengthened recently after the Columbine massacre a few months ago, and some of the new security guards are sitting at a table close to yours, stereotypically enjoying some donuts. You both know Noah Vaughn, and you're here because of his sister Amber. She's called you here because Noah has gone missing. His life came crashing down about a month ago, when you broke up with him, Rachel, and for good reason. Who are you and what happened? Well, my name is Rachel Smith. I'm a young woman, 21, short blonde hair, slightly narrow nose, mostly slim, wears nice Jackets, blue jeans. Quite a artist. I'm into photography and painting, that sort of thing. Noah, well, he was a great boyfriend for a time, and then, well, things went a bit unpleasant, uh, and I broke up with him, and... His sister did reach out to me in regard to him disappearing. And I don't think she knows that we broke up, so that's interesting. And uh, I haven't mentioned it to her yet, actually. Better that I help her find Noah. I'd be interested in finding him. Sure. Sure. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? You would, wouldn't you? Jerome. Professor Jerome Wilkes. Noah came to hand in an assignment two weeks ago, for your creative writing class. You didn't see him that time, though. You haven't really seen him, actually, for... Well, it must be about a month. Who are you, and who is Noah to you? Yeah, well, that latest assignment uh, wasn't really much of an assignment. Uh, that was more of notes scribbled down in a filthy notebook. Not Noah's standards at all. Something's clearly going on. Um, yeah, I'm a professor... Jerome Wilkes, and I come from a, well, shall we say, an exploring background. I've, uh, I've lived, I've uh, enjoyed the many weird things that this world has to offer. I uh, tried out, well, my hand, I tried my hand at a writing career, and uh, it went to absolute shit. Well, it actually didn't go anywhere. Until... I instead started writing, uh, well, reviews. I became a critic, the kind of person that you, uh, as a writer, would not love. But somehow I became loved in that position. And then somehow, ironically, I guess through my successes, I was uh, I was offered a place as... Uh, professor as a teacher in creative writing, which in itself is, of course, ironic, considering that that was just what I didn't 
succeed in myself. But with my knowledge of uh, what works and what doesn't, when others do it at least, I have been able to foster quite a bit of creativity, I'd like to think. And Noah in specific, he, uh, he was a person who came to me with, shall we say, subpar skills. There were, he had a lot of ideas and he generally didn't foster them properly. They became shallow, with small pieces, not wanting to go anywhere really. And... Uh, well, under my guidance, I uh, I saw him. I saw him flower. He uh, he found himself. He found his style and uh, it took uh, it took me by storm. I suppose uh, he is my best student. He has done writing that has captivated me like nothing else has. I have I have read his latest. Well, his world-building assignment unnumbered times. And uh, with him now just handing in this little thing, the scribble on his notebook, that I am not going to take my time correcting, but rather just hand over to my assistant to see if there are any kind of clues as to his current whereabouts. Um, well, I want him back, of course, to my class. You do want him back, don't you? There's something about that... The way that he... That he writes. It's... It's special, isn't it? Why does it turn out that way when he does it? I don't understand it. What is it that he's doing? I need to know why. Yes. And for that you must, of course, find him. So you can talk to him again, and maybe this time, maybe this time, he won't be rebuked. Maybe this time, yes, maybe this time. I haven't heard from Noah for a week now. Amber um, speaks. She must be about the same age as, uh, as you, Rachel. She's got brown hair, freckles, perfectly tanned. She's wearing a baby tank top and low-rise jeans, exposing her midriff. Looks like she stepped right out of a, an MTV music video. She's trying to keep herself cool by flapping a pamphlet back and forth. He was acting super sketch even before then. I've called him into missing persons, but you know, not exactly holding my breath. College students disappear and reappear all, all the time, apparently. I just really don't want mom and dad to freak out, so I was, I was really hoping you could help me find him. You? Because, well, he seemed to care deeply for you, Rachel. Did you meet Noah's parents and Amber in their home, perhaps? No, I did not. We'd only really been going out six or seven months. I mean, it was getting to the point where that might have been possible, but then I guess it just didn't happen. So he talked about them a lot, though. I know he talked about his sister a great deal. Hmm. And you, Professor Wilkes, because... He kept talking about how much your class meant to him and the creativity you were able to inspire in him. Well, he made great progress in my class. I would hate to know... Well, I would hate to hear that something would have befallen him. Um, I have only this. I hold up a paper. This is a transcript uh, of his latest, well, handed in assignment. Um... No, I, I care a lot for my students, and Noah in particular. I really appreciate you reaching out today. Um, yeah, I really hope we can find him. I don't really know New York and, and Columbia. I, I study at Ole Miss, so I really need help from someone who knows the city. Do you, do you guys have any idea of what could have happened? This transcript, for, for example, this thing that he wrote, you wrote that fairly recently, right? This was just prior to his disappearance uh, if we, that's what we're gonna call it it was just scribbled down what he gave me on a few pages in a tattered stained notebook uh, not something that I would grade uh, but if it had any clue now as things have gone down a certain direction I wished uh, one of my assistants to at least to go through it I look at this uh, sister of his looking her up and down she 
seems to be made of other material than him. Um, not more the MTV kind of girl, not really my type. Even though I unfortunately have been caught at some points by my uh, fellow colleagues with uh, doing things with students, but it's all consensual, it's all... Uh, no one is a minor at the university. Um, That's right, of course. You're doing nothing wrong. No, I, I don't think I am. And, um, well, Noah is different, but, uh, well, he's, he's not different. I haven't done anything with him. No. But he is riveting. And uh, I, I, my, I drift off as I look over to this ex-girlfriend of his trying to see what there was there. What did you uh, look like, Rachel? So Rachel is, again, a young woman in her early 20s, kind of Finnish, long nose. She has short blonde hair, although it's actually been cut quite recently to that length. She wears today a nice brown jacket over a nice simple green top with green slim jeans nice shoes i am um i am dressed uh, in a smart casual kind of way probably in my it's kind of hard to see late 30s maybe 40s way too many wrinkles uh, but somehow the skin looks soft so that might just be part of my expressive face whenever i'm talking to someone you can see that i'm using my, I have a big mouth and uh, I keep furrowing my brow in, in big ways. Very expressive kind of face, kind of charming in a way. And uh, my clothes look old fashioned, smart casual mix, sort of a turtleneck with a tweed jacket and elbow patches kind of style. And uh, you see my eyes, I look. Uh, I look like a gentle person, but perhaps tired. Sort of a lithe, almost wiry body. Um, yes, these... Uh, let's see. Uh, I uh, I should have a look at this. Uh, it'll take me some time to read, perhaps. I, I look down at the uh, extract that uh, my assistant have, has done, the transcript. Um, is it a long thing, or is it something I can read for them here together. If you would like to uh, to read for them, you certainly can. It is not very long. Some drop of sweat rolls down on the side of my face and I dab it off with a small handkerchief. Um, yes, so here's how it starts. A drop of sweat rolls down the side of my face as my muscles cry in unison, stretched to their limits over an X-shaped cross. In the distance, two dying suns stare back at me like a pair of bloodshot eyes watching over a world bathed in red. Sulfuric clouds march across the writhing sky, dusted with a myriad of razor-sharp sparks that ignite and die a moment later. A monolithic structure rises on the horizon, scarred with glowing yellow incisions that cut into its sides, much like the wires cut into my flesh. As you read the transcript, you feel, well, the heat that the air conditioning was keeping away, it comes back. But this is within you. And there's this heat and, and a slight arousal. It's like pain and pleasure all at once. You can see me... Uh, uh, tightening up a bit as uh, a bit more sweat rolls down my face. I seem to be unaware of it. Uh, it's almost as if I'm having a bit of pleasure shot at me as I'm reading. I continue. The sun orbs appear to shut, overcast by thick black fumes ascending from a decrepit city that had collapsed within itself. Suddenly, I become aware of another presence. A female shape materializes before me, exhaled from between the slits in the cracked earth. Slender legs walked toward me, and I 
as I follow their motion, the curse of their hips take a tentative form, wavering on the edge of existence. A shiver runs down my tense spine and I hear my bones click in morbid harmony. By the end of this sentence, I'm almost whispering it to myself. Yes, you're experiencing this scene in vivid detail. It makes you feel so much. Rachel, you're hearing this. What does it make you feel? At first, I'm just listening. And then as he goes on and on and begins elongating the words and reading it like it's all so wonderful, I just start feeling a deep, wrenching gut pain. And I clench my hands a little. And as he gets that last sentence, I just interrupt and say, Yeah, so, I mean, is any of that actually useful? Sounds like a load of bullshit to me. Sorry. We're here to look for a guy, not have you, whatever you're doing with this poetry. It's not a poetry reading, Professor. I smile very charmingly and very understandingly. You're young, you don't understand, is what my eyes are saying. In a strange kind of appealing way, I suppose. Or terribly patronizing. Uh, you can take your pick. No, of course not. Um, what we're looking for here are clues. It is, of course, a, a very poetic text. And if we can find anything here that uh, that you feel that you can perhaps reference to, anything that he might have said before, then that's what I'd like you to listen for, if that's all right. It's like his sister says he was starting to be a little bit troubled, right? We already know that. I have a much better lead, she leans forward, because I know that all his property will currently be down in the lost and found. And you, being a family member, well, you're allowed to go and look at it. I'm not, no one else is. So maybe if we actually go and look at his stuff, I don't know, maybe there's some evidence. Or a clue, I mean. Uh, That sounds sounds great, and Amber says, yeah, uh, well, I mean... That that might definitely lead somewhere. Um, sh- do you want to go, Professor? Should we, should we head over? There? I don't doubt that. That's uh, a good way to start. Uh, I um, I'm going to continue reading this. Uh, if you don't want to hear it, then uh, that's fine. No, I, I want to hear it. Um, if you wrote it, there's a little bit left. Um, what I see here is that you might be writing about some kind of muse. I'm sorry if this is. Uh, I understand if this is hurtful for you, Rachel, if uh, if this is about another woman. I don't know the exact story. Uh, uh, Well, um, it's not much left. Fine, go on, hurry up. All right, all right. uh, Her form becomes more defined, and I feel something stir within me. A pair of full breasts, like falling teardrops, rest gently on her chest creating a triangle with a hollow between her collarbones. My limbs grow weaker while a familiar heat begins to burn in my loins, lacing the pain in my wrists and ankles with a tinge of satisfaction. I watch her features... I watch her features adjust. uh, Her her cheekbones slide back and up, making her face slender and slightly angular. Her lips swell and fill with color while her nose narrows down and arches so the tip perks up. Black hair grows out of the apex of her skull, cascading down past her shoulder blades. For the first time she looks at me, her eyes like the suns in the sky. The woman of my dreams. You smell, Professor, you smell a smell of sulfur. And the fan blades keep whirring up above. And the heat is intense. The air conditioning must have stopped working or something like that, you feel. I savor the moment for a bit. I sit there and I look at it. So finish this up. And what's what's even better is that you have this text now. You will be able to read this text again and again. Just, just like his previous works. And you will meet him soon. You will find him. And you can talk about this. I look to Amber again, just trying to share some look of is this guy for real I don't like him I don't like this professor the hairs on my neck are started to stand up it was the way he was reading that text it's just making me sick and then the way he looked at me what a fucking fucker but whatever I'm going to try and hold that in because if he can help find Noah that's that's what I need 
that's the important thing. So I sort of look at the professor as he finally finishes and try and smile and say, Cool, you've enjoyed your poem. Shall we now go and do something? Yeah, yeah, of course. Let's, um, you said something about the lost and found. What do you mean, uh, at the school? Yeah, exactly. I heard a rumor from his friend that he'd not been paying rent for the last two weeks, so they've cleared out the room, so it'll all be downstairs, waiting for someone to collect it, either himself or family member. You know the rules. Well, I should be able to get it then, says Amber. Yeah, you will want that anyway, won't you? But, um, yeah, let's see then. Maybe there are notes or something else. I hope so. Hey, P- Professor, what, what do you think it, it meant, the text? Uh, this woman, is, uh, has he met mm. someone new? I mean... It sounds interesting. It's almost... Um, it's as if she is... Uh, her features adjust. This is the last bit here. I don't really understand how someone changes. It's as if he, if he was someone that he once saw and that then takes on a different form. Um, the rest of it here... Does it in any regard sound familiar to what he's written before? I mean, it's the same style, of course, and Maskman. It is the same style, yes. This thing about the dying suns, it, yeah... I mean, in his mm-hmm. previous works, you have seen similar themes appearing, and it has all had this sort of sensual quality to it. Yeah. What he did write for me before was a uh, very vivid, riveting, really, description of hell. And it was in less than 3,000 words, and yet so real this here well this here this seems to be almost a continuation of what he was writing before he um i'm not sure you're familiar with his works i look at the both of the girls i sort of smile and say yeah i'm familiar with when he used to write about dragons and knights in armor before he started on that shit oh you uh don't seem to appreciate his artistic side I sort of give you this sort of very annoyed look, and then I look to Amber. No, I very much liked his artistic side when he used to write nice things. Was that long ago? Yeah, no, it it's, it's sure sounds different from what I what he showed me. He seems to have found something new, I guess. Well, uh, we can ask him about it when we find him. Yes, and I'm sure he'll write you a story about dragons if you... Never mind. Yeah, let's uh, go then. So, his room, he lives in a dorm, Shapiro Hall, which is in Morningside Heights. It's southwest of Harlem, on Manhattan. It's really not that far off. You can walk there. Yeah, I suppose, I mean, if if I don't have anything... Is this a day off? What is, what is this thing? Yes, it is. Um, it's around ten o'clock in the in the early, uh, uh, well, in, in the morning, and yeah. Today, you probably have things that you should be doing, but but there's something about this that nah, you can you can push it. I mean, you have tenure anyway, so you, they can't fire you. You know, what are they gonna do? Be mad at you? No, no. I, I have uh, rescheduled some things. I made some arrangements uh, with homework and assignments instead. Um, uh, this is this is all that matters right now. <laughs> well, it's a hot day to w- walk outside. Uh, I suppose we could take a cab down. Sure, you can pay. I make a face as if I uh, that's the natural thing to do, and you see my uh, brow wrinkle up in an infinity amount of wrinkles that somehow look very charming. And uh, I uh, pay my bill and leave the cafe. And as you leave, you get out into the heat and it feels like walking directly into sauna with all your clothes on. The heat, it is excruciating. You really hope this heat wave will end soon. You're able to find a cab pretty quickly, though. One with air conditioning. It's not 
good enough, really, but it's at least better than being out in the heat. And you, um, you drive the, the short stretch to Morningside Heights and to Shapiro Hall, Noah's dorm room. It's a brick building with an entrance in dark green. Outside, some kids have busted open a fire hydrant and water is splashing everywhere. I get out of the cab. I'm really hot and sweltering, but I don't remove my jacket. I can't. I don't, I don't want to remove my jacket. I feel safe wearing my jacket. So I will suffer through the heat. And I start leading the way, like, Come on, okay, should be downstairs, I think, the last one found. We can go and uh, start looking through boxes. Again, maybe there'll be something, you know, better than a poem. I nod and smile. I really hope we find him, says Amber and smiles her best MTV smile. I feel uh, excited. And, uh, yeah, you walk inside then Shapiro Hall, and as you get inside the place, it smells of antiseptics. Sterile, clean, cool, but very unwelcoming. It's like, you know how a hospital feels? Like that. There's a pregnant girl waiting in the lobby. You see some hungover students milling about. Hollow-eyed features that remind you of cancer patients. Look at them. and look at. I mean, I didn't expect that. At least it smells clean. It does. I uh, let Rachel lead the way. And Rachel, you see a, a janitor walking uh, by with a toolbox. I think you, you think you've seen him here before. Like, you didn't usually hang out at, at his place because he's in the dorm room and he was sharing it with some guy. Um, you tended to probably hang out at your place, right? Yeah, that's right. Most of the time we'd hang out at mine. Uh, you know, initially he was kind of shy about going back to his. And then, well, it was only really at the end where I finally started going back to his. Well, do I know who to talk to about Lost and Found? The janitor, perhaps? I mean, it seems like you would work here, so that might be a good choice. Hey, sir. Sorry to bother you. Uh, we're just here to check in the Lost and Found for uh, Noah. Uh, I believe he had some things that you'd put in storage. Uh, well, I have his next of kin here, pointing to Amber, and she'd really like to, you know, check his stuff just to see what's going on. The man looks you uh, up and down. He's an older older man in his... Wow, he must be approaching retirement. He's probably worked here forever. He too has this this quality about him. He looks sick. Looks like life is fading away from from him. Uh, but yes, he he nods and goes, oh, Mr. Vaughn's belongings. Sure, yeah, they're in the lost and found and well, you do look a little bit like him. She, he says and, and uh, nods to, to Amber. Room is all cleaned out, so... It's all here. He points you towards a a door and opens it and brings out some things. Here we are, the belongings from room 1406. And it's, you know, it takes a little while for him to get it all out. It's um, bags, plastic bags. And inside you see like everyday use items like clothes, textbooks, Oh, uh, well, that's the textbook for your creative writing class right there. Um, there's also a small suitcase that seems to be locked. I go and try and open the suitcase, possibly getting a little frustrated if I find it locked and I'm, and I'm not able to open it. I'm really looking carefully over everything here because I want to find something. Something. There must be some evidence. Something he's left behind that I can use. Amber uh, looks over the things, and then she, uh, Professor? I, uh, as we um, are being led by the janitor, I will have making small talk, telling him that I am uh, his teacher, explaining just my purpose here and why I'm here, and uh, asking him a little things about Noah that he might know about him. Uh, I don't know if I'm able to get something out of him. I... Don't really know, Mr. Vaughn. He seemed... He seemed nice, I suppose. As far as students go. He didn't cause any trouble. Didn't strike me as the type who makes a lot of noise. Uh, 
Oh, this is interesting. I uh, open the plastic bag with the te textbooks as Rachel starts fiddling with the bag. Uh, I want to see if there's anything more written, anything that he wrote perhaps even after his... what he handed in last. If she scribbles in, in the note in, in this uh, textbook, but it's mostly like... Uh, mostly he has underlined things and, and put like yellow marker to highlight. There's a lot of like um, these post-it notes inside. Um it's actually kind of filled with that. It, it looks like he's really spent a lot of time with this book and you can see that it's worn and he must have spent quite a lot of time on your class and getting prepared for your class. How does that make you feel? That was the thing with him. He didn't have that much. I mean, he had potential, but he didn't have much skill from the start. But his perseverance, the hours he put in, they are what made him what he is now. And of course, there was inherent talent as well. Seeing this, and seeing all the sketch material, all the raw material, makes me... It makes me proud, and... It just verifies what I already suspected, that he was working a lot by himself as well. I would have been very disappointed if I had found something different, because this is what I expected. Yes, it is. And um, Rachel, you're looking at this at this suitcase, and Amber looks to you as well. I, I recognize all this other stuff. I mean, aside from school stuff, I, this is all stuff that you know my, my mom and dad uh, bought for him. Uh, but yeah, I've never seen this suitcase before. No, interesting. Well, I can't get it open. Have you got like a? Something I can lever it open with or something. You look at the lock mechanism on this, and it, it seems actually to be... this a little thing you can flip open, and then there's a, actually a, a cipher, a cold lock on it. Three digits. Noah always used the same digits everywhere, didn't he? Which ones did he use? Oh, wait. Yeah, actually, he really liked... 112. <laughs> he thought it was funny for some reason. I don't know what was funny about 112. He just thought maybe because it was so simple... But yeah, no, I'm going to try that. One, one, two. It works. Aha. And I flip it open, really anxious to see what's inside. Inside you find... Mm, there's a CDR. Uh, just, you know, like the one you, ones you would burn, you know, put content on. There's uh, several books. They're all written by Marquise de Sade. Justine, Juliet, Philosophy in the Bedroom, 120 Days of Sodom. Um, there's also a collection of sex toys. Many of them are clearly designed to inflict pain as well as pleasure. There's also a leaflet for something. And a stained notebook. What does the leaflet say? Oh, it's a leaflet for a sex shop on the Upper East Side. I kind of again feel sick in my stomach looking at all this but then another feeling comes I look at Amber how is she looking seeing this? Oh absolutely shocked like she, her face has turned completely red like this is extremely embarrassing uh, to see her brother's perversion just laid out like this for all to see, for the janitor to see. Everything is so clear, and it's just her brother. You think she must be feeling like that. Um, she's just quiet and just completely red and just just looks a bit scared. Good, I think to myself. Yeah, yeah, see, the truth. And this is good, this is good stuff, but it's, it's not quite enough, is it? It's, mm, this is something you could write off as just embarrassing no i need to find more okay notebook i take out the notebook and i just start flicking through it you uh you've looked at the leaflets and uh, professor you've also seen this uh notebook do you do you try to go for that one or do you uh, do you let rachel get it first um i am studying the reactions of the two of them as this suitcase is opened i uh, I'm looking with a kind of empty look at the toys and the things that are in there. Of course, I am deadly curious about that notebook. And uh, I study Rachel as she is reading and all her reactions. 
and I was wondering if I could roll for I for detail. Certainly. That's a 12, so I can ask two questions. And uh, I see you uh, sort of holding, how you hold things, how you relate to things, how you move as we have been on our way here. And I'd like to ask the question, are you capable of violence? Yes. You don't quite know what. I imagine no. that you know that. Something about my tensing of my hands, though, and my build. Yes. Hmm. And uh, as I see you react to these different things, you seem to not react so much to what's in the, the actual suitcase, but uh, from your reactions when you read the things that I... Uh, that you just called empty poetry. Maybe I could garner a reaction of something that you reacted to that lets me ask the question of how could I seduce or tempt you? There is nothing you could do. If you try, I'll hurt you. You know this. And uh, as I see you, uh, your eyes slipping from thing to thing in the uh, uh, pamphlet, I... Uh, I quickly try to reach down and, and grab that notebook. Hmm. And you see the professor is going for the notebook. Are you going to allow him to uh, to get that one, or are you going to try to get it first? I will only allow it on the grounds that I don't think I'd have noticed he was suddenly so close, and my grip probably just wasn't quite strong enough as he just yanks it out of my hand. Then, professor, you get a hold of this notebook. It's... You quickly notice that it is some kind of a journal. There's erotic drawings inside of it as well. I say politely, I'm sorry, as if I didn't at all see that you were going to go for that book. Um, oh, well, let me see. And I start flicking through it, and I see the drawings. And uh, do, how do they look? Well, he's a better writer than he is... Of you know, good at illustrations or drawings. But there's some of the quality that he brings into his writing there as well. If he worked harder at that part, maybe he could become a, well, a good illustrator as well. There's plenty written, though. That's really what draws your eyes more than the the erotic uh, imagery. I uh, look between images and I read the text and... Uh... I, uh, how do you, how does uh, Rachel and uh, Amber look at me when I'm reading this? Are they expecting me to read for them or are they very dismissive? Amber has uh, started looking at her phone just like trying to pretend that whatever's happening here isn't actually really happening and that uh, surely you will come to her with some clues as to where Noah has gotten that she j just, yes, she kind of walks off a little bit and, and goes and sits down on on a, on a sofa close to the pregnant girl. And uh, Rachel? I continue to look over what else is left in the suitcase, although it seems that perhaps you have the best thing now. Yes, uh, Rachel, what do you have is there's a CDR, um, so there's something on there, um, clearly. And then there are these books by Marquis de Sade. You are somewhat familiar with Marquis de Sade, of course, who, who wouldn't be? They're, of course, uh, very much fitting with... Uh, well, the well, what happened, you know, and exactly. No, I am familiar with some of this, although part of me feels a lot of it is new, even to me. But I'm not surprised. I can imagine what he was getting up to in the last month, <laughs> whatever. Still, I'm not surprised at most of it. It just confirms what I already knew. Yes. And I'm glad that people are seeing it. That's what I want to happen. But the CD. Ugh. Is there just going to be gross shit on it or is it actually going to be useful? I mean, I'll put it in my pocket. Meanwhile, I'm reading quietly since no one seems to appreciate the writings of Noah quite as much as I have. And uh, so I'm uh, ro I'm reading and uh, this is how it goes. 
Her harsh tongue slithers across my chest, leaving a trail of engorged veins under my skin. She presses herself into me, and I feel the heat of her soft, perfect body. I try to arch into her, satisfy the desire for movement that has burned inside me ever since she appeared, but her surprisingly strong arms push me back against the cross. I let out a disgruntled moan, trapped between her warmth and the cold, slick surface of the stone holding my limbs. I can almost hear the rush of my own blood as her lips reach my neck. My craving for her flesh is so intense it seems almost physical, writhing inside me like an animal. I'm ready to beg. When her nails bite into my hips and rake their way up my sides, I cry out in abominable ecstasy as drops of hot red liquid lubricate her fingers. She pulls back, bringing them to her mouth to taste them. Her gaze drops to my groin, and I watch her eyes narrow maliciously, suddenly overcome with a mixture of anticipation and terror. Then I see that there are several started and crossed out lines as if he's started something, but didn't want to finish it, and then I see the line written, I can't keep writing this, it's too real, those scars, and um, I feel myself filled with his excitement, exactly what he's writing is, is in me now, and I'm embarrassed, I have to turn away to keep reading, I pretend to go for a source of light and stand a little bit away. I get up from the suitcase, feeling not satisfied, but feeling that's enough from there. I close it, I lock it, and I do look over towards Amber, and I do feel a little twinge of mild sympathy, just for a moment. And I do walk over, trying to smile, as I say, Hey, so you alright? Uh, no. No, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not alright. Uh... It, but he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to explain what this is. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it's not his stuff. It can't be. He's not like that. Not my brother. I lean in a little, and I almost reach out to put my hand on her shoulder, but I kind of stop myself. My hand twitching. I put my hands back on my person. Listen, Amber, I didn't want to have it revealed like this. Not really, but you're gonna find out some things about Noah you're not gonna like. Okay, but you've gotta. You gotta find them out, as you said. He's got an answer, and together we'll find him, and he will. Yeah. Let's find him, Rachel. Let's find him. I want to make sure he's safe, and and then we can take. I can take him away from this. I can take him back to mom and dad. I don't think he should be here. In the meantime, uh, as I scroll through the, I, I flick through the pictures and the following. Uh, entries of this journal. It seems to have taken more of a shape of a, a diary or almost a calendar. Entries like Today on the bus I saw a girl with long nails. I got hard. What's wrong with my head? Followed by a few pictures. Then I can't sleep. The craving never seems to go away. It's driving me mad. I keep looking for new ways to pleasure myself, but the toys are so expensive. This need is growing inside of me. I'm afraid of catching something, but... And then, another break. I went to the room. I told myself I wouldn't, but the pining was so strong I couldn't resist it. Fuck, that was stupid, but it felt so good. I was alone for an hour, and I didn't think anybody would show up, but they did. Two, five, ten... I lost count eventually. Nobody said a word. They fucked me on the seedy mattress and against the walls. They pushed me, pulled my hair and bound me. I had so many people inside me, I feel filthy. But each and every one of them brought me closer to something. I can't describe it. Every orgasm was a moment of clarity I've never experienced before. I feel this close to understanding everything. I will go there again soon. And, uh... I have to, as I read this, I have to almost restrain myself from touching myself. And I feel a pang of jealousy of uh, not having been there myself, been one of those 
ten people or how many ever there were doing things to him. And I flick through the rest and I can't find anything until the final page. It says, Shit, I think I may have caught something after all. I've been throwing up, but only this strange bile comes out. It sticks to my throat and I keep wanting to swallow, but I can't. It makes me feel so full and I can't stop thinking about going back. <sighs> I snapshot the book. Well, did you find anything else? Well, we've got this CD here we'll probably have to look at, and, uh, well, what's in there? And I reach out my hand, wanting to take the book from you. Yeah, I casually hand it over to you. It starts out with uh, a bit of more poetry, as you like to call it, and uh, then it's more of a journal. Do you know of a place called The Room? No, I don't. And I start flicking through. I skim the poetry. But I do actually start looking at those what seem more like diary entries. I find some of it very strange, because... Why did this happen? Hmm. Do I remember him keeping a diary, or say he kept a diary? You did, of course, see him writing quite often, but he, he didn't talk of a diary, no. If I may, there seems to be a clear discrepancy here in um, what he has been writing as poetry, which I thirst thought perhaps was inspired by someone, like a particular person, just like this, and I hold up the transcript. Uh, but maybe that was actually just musings, albeit very catching musings, whereas this here is related more to reality. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, Of course, I'm just his teacher. But, uh, did you know that he had any nymphomaniac tendencies I wrinkle my nose and then after a sh short pause I look at Amber I look back at the professor and I say he didn't initially no he started to be into that sort of thing just in the last month before we well I look at Amber as I say after we broke up right and uh, Amber looks surprised Oh, well, um, there's clearly a place there that seems important to him, and I, uh, as you have taken over that, I go over and I look at the other things that you've already had a look at, and uh, I take the pamphlet. Maybe this place, maybe there's someone there who would know, um, or perhaps he had a room, did he share a room with someone here at the dormitory? Rachel, you do know that, yes, and uh, the room was 1406. Yes, well, I don't know. I mean, his stuff's all been emptied out. I don't know if the... Would the roommate have... It's a college dorm, isn't it? So mm -hmm. would the roommate have, like... Basically, I'm asking, like, is it that the sort of setup where it's like a room and there's two people in a room? Or do you have separate rooms? That sort of thing. When you saw it, it was like, it's basically one room. There's a small division between them so that, you know, you don't have to be in each other's faces all the time, but you sort of have access to, to each other. To be honest, I haven't seen his roommate for some time. Yeah, sure, I guess we can go and have a little look. He can maybe even use his computer to look at the CD. I do look at that diary again, and I do just feel a little disturbed at some of the stuff about catching something. I went to a doctor as soon as we broke up. I was... I didn't have anything, did I? No, no, you didn't have anything. Yeah, no, I... I good, that must have... This all must have happened after. It must have happened when I left. It just got worse. I didn't even think it could get worse, but it got worse. Still, that's good. There's evidence. That's what I want. Do you say anything about this? No. Uh, you just see me looking at the book for a little longer, and then I close it, look at you, and go, All right, Professor, if you want to go upstairs, we can go and see if he's in, I guess. What was his roommate's name? His roommate's uh, name is Tom. Yeah, Tom. Saw him a few times. He might still be there. You all right with that, Amber? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Let, let's go. Let's go talk to to the roommate. Maybe, maybe he knows something. As we go up and through the halls that we were in before, I just there's something familiar about this place. There's something familiar about how everybody looks and how this, how the smell of everything. It's it's gripping. It's catching. Just like what Noah has been writing. Um, I was wondering if I could use my en enhanced awareness here. Sure. I look around and I try to f put my finger on what this 
familiarity is. 11. This really is what it seems like. This is some form of... I mean, it is a dorm, but it is... Everyone here is is really dying. And this is caught between different worlds. It's It's connected to something deeper, something not so distinct, something fleeting. And... And you feel like the people here will be in this state for a very, very long time. It may never it may never change for them. They might be here forever, stuck in this limbo. It's strange. Um, the feelings that come to me, and I can't really explain them. It's, it feels like I've wandered straight into a piece of writing. It's just like it's just like when I read the things with about hell that Noah wrote. Something familiar. I can't put my finger on it, but somehow it's enticing. I can see how he was inspiring to write those texts and how he did it so vividly. Yes. I actually thought myself that when I felt the familiarity in his texts that perhaps he was copying from somewhere. I didn't want to accuse him of plagiarism, but I needed to talk about him. Where did he get it from? And I can feel it in this place. This is the kind of place. Yes, this is a powerful place, but this isn't the place he was writing about. The place he was writing about was the place he wanted to go to. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the scenario Downfall. Downfall was written by M. Marshall and is part of the upcoming scenario collection Screams and Whispers. The music was made by Mechano Receptor. Thank you, Ryan. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobear, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, and Julia for their generous support. And we would, of course, also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want early access to our content and to hear raw versions of our recordings right after we've done them, or join a campaign of Cult Divinity Lost as a player, please check out our new higher level tiers on Patreon. It's a great way to get more Red Moon role-playing in your life, and to help us keep the show going. Thank you again for listening, and remember, death is only the beginning. <laughs>